Hey everyone, welcome back to Mama Nature's Kitchen. Guess what's for dinner? Chicken paprika stew. And oh my goodness, this is one of my family's favorites. You're gonna love it too. Mama Nature here. Some of my favorite recipes start with bacon, and this one is no different. I just chopped up about a half a pound, which is about a half a package, of a good smoky bacon. So while the bacon is cooking on a nice low flame, I've got some partially thawed chicken. If your chicken is already thawed, then partially freeze it, because it's just easier to slice this way. And I'm just cutting it into pieces that are a little bit larger than maybe bite size because when we cook it, it's gonna shrink up a little bit. Now it's all sliced up, it's going in the pot with the bacon. Once your chicken is in the pot, go ahead and turn the flame up a little bit closer to medium, not quite medium, and uh, start to get that chicken cooked through. But we don't wanna burn the bacon. You notice I'm using a nice deep Dutch oven because, well, you know, bacon spatters. We don't want that. And we don't want the mess. With a nice sharp blade, we're going to start cutting up our vegetables. I've got some carrots, and I'm going to put about half of this onion in there, too. Here's a little carrot chopping trick. Because they'll roll around on you, what I like to do is cut it in half, and then I put the flat sides down. This way I get a bite-sized piece, and I don't have to chase them around the kitchen. That's a bonus. Everyone seems to have their own method for how to dice up an onion, but for me, I find it easier if I cut it in half from, uh, you know, stem to root, and then I cut off the ugly bits at the top and bottom. Then I peel out the outer layer, so I'm left with the beautiful fresh part that has not been touched by any human hands until just now. And then what I'll do, because I want a coarser dice, is I'll cut this four or five slices and then I'll go into this at an angle so I'm aiming my blade toward the center of the onion okay straight down straight towards the center and then when I get to this last little bit I just roll it over and hit her again and there you go now nature already cut them in the rings so you really only have to go into it once and twice. Veggies are all sliced up and they're in the bowl. I put some salt and pepper and now it's time to add the rest of our spices. Now I'm gonna put in two bay leaves, organic bay leaves. Have you ever been to Chipotle and they give you food and it has a leaf in it and you wonder what in the world are they thinking? This is what they're thinking. It's a seasoning. You don't eat it, you pull it out. Okay, but it's in there on purpose. That's the reason I'm telling you. All right, I've got some good Hungarian paprika, and I want to put about two teaspoons, and I'm gonna eyeball it. Yeah, that looks good. Once you've been doing this long enough, you don't fiddle around with measuring cups, you know? All right, I've got some good stinky cumin. About one teaspoon of cumin. We just want to have the idea that it was mere cumin. We don't want it to have too much because it can be overwhelming. Ginger, I want about a half a teaspoon. And cinnamon, same, about half a teaspoon. There we go. And marjoram, about a half a teaspoon. Now I know you're probably thinking this is a very strange combination of flavors, but I'm telling you, when they all come together, it's just like magic. I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic powder and then I'm gonna add the actual smashed cloves of garlic. Just about two cloves. Okay, everything's together in the bowl. And yes, I am a garlic cheater. I seriously enjoy the uh, jarred minced garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my pot. You can see the chicken is all cooked through. And so we're ready for the vegetables. Everybody goes in. And we're gonna stir that around and give that just a couple minutes. My carrots are starting to soften up and you can see that the onions are becoming translucent. 
and everything is just starting to stick to the bottom of my pan, which is perfect. That's just what we want. So now here's where the magic starts. We want to move everything out to the sides. And so far we've just been cooking all of this in our baking grease, right? We haven't added any of our olive oil yet. So I'm going to go ahead and put in about two tablespoons of olive oil. There we go. And this is how we make our roux. The roux is what's going to make the stew a nice thick texture. Otherwise, it's just going to be chicken paprika soup. All right, so I've got a jar of flour here. This is not the unbleached all-purpose flour. This is an all-purpose gluten-free flour. So we're not adding any greens to our dish today. I'm going to put in about two heaping teaspoons, probably closer to a tablespoon. And we want that flour to absorb the olive oil. So I'm just going to push it around there a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and combine everything. What's going to happen now is that all of this is going to become a little bit dried out, of course, because we're soaking up all of that oil. So it's going to start to stick on the bottom of the pan. We're going to start to get burny stickies on the bottom of our pan, which is perfect. That's where the flavor comes from. Oh boy, it smells so good already. Let that go for about two or three minutes. Nice medium flame. You just try to catch a cold after eating this. With all of the antibiotic ingredients that are in here, your onions, your garlic, and even your marjoram, your immune system is gonna be very happy with you. And because there's cinnamon in there, it's also good for diabetics because cinnamon helps to regulate your blood sugar. Pretty cool, huh? All right, you can see how Everything is coated with the flour mixture. It's starting to get nice and golden on the bottom of my pan. So now we're going to deglaze the pan, which really just means we're gonna to start to pick up all that stuff from the bottom and turn it into a nice gravy, okay? Now, I know in the recipe I told you to go ahead and use a half a cup of white wine and then a cup and a half of chicken stock I'm just gonna go with the chicken stock today. We're skipping the white wine part. There you go. And this is gonna deglaze the pan really nicely. Oh, it smells wonderful. So all those scraping sounds is gonna turn into a nice smooth bottom. And look at that gravy. It's just the prettiest thing. It's gonna taste so good. For my tomatoes, I have a nice big can of the organic diced fire roasted. So this is gonna be really good. Now I'm not gonna put in all 28 ounces. I only want about half of this. So here we go. I want to get all those juices. Oh boy. Yum. That's about half. One more scoop for good luck. There we go. Mix it all up. And that's all you got to do, kids. Now we're just going to let it simmer on a nice low flame for about mm, 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. We want this to thicken up just a little bit. So I'll come back every five minutes or so and give it a stir and check on the texture. But otherwise, we're good to go. I've gone ahead and put the leftover fire roasted tomatoes into some eight ounce bowl jars. So now I have them for other recipes in the future. And I mark them with what it is and the date, today's date, with a grease pencil, which is so easy to clean off later. That there is a Mama Nature approved tip. There you have it, Mama Nature's Chicken Paprika Stew. The aroma is heavenly and I cannot wait to dive in. Now you could go ahead and serve this with some pierogies on the side, or you could make some polenta, or you could even make a good flaky, buttery flaky biscuit to go alongside. 
the sky is the limit. Go ahead and get creative. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe so that you get more like this in the future. And uh, remember, you can make and keep yourself well. So until next time, Mama loves you.